It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be talking about theoretical probability and experimental probability. Here's my video lesson today. Our objectives are you, the student, will understand both theoretical and experimental probability. You will also be able to predict the approximate relative frequency of an experiment using theoretical probability. And here's the essential question that I would like you thinking about today as I proceed through the video lesson. What is the difference between theoretical and experimental probability? So don't forget that. Let's think about that as we go through the lesson. Here's some vocabulary words. We're going to start with defining theoretical probability, which is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. This is also sometimes considered simple probability. So in theory, I have a fair spinner here, meaning it's fair because it is divided into five equal sections. Each section is a different color. So in theory, to spin and land, to stop on any one of these colors, we have possible outcomes of five. To land on yellow would be a one in five theoretical probability. In theory, one out of five times I would land on blue, one out of five on purple, one out of five on red, and one out of five on this turquoise color. So that's in theory, right? In a perfect world. If I spun this five times, the spinner would stop on each color once. So one out of five is also considered 20%. So 20% of the time I would land on yellow, 20% of the time on blue, and so on and so forth. Now let's define experimental probability. That is the probability of an event happening when an experiment is performed. It is represented as the ratio of the number of times the event occurred to the number of trials conducted. So you're going to conduct an experiment, meaning you would sit and spin the spinner a bunch of times, and you would tally how many times it landed on yellow, or purple, or red, and then we would have our experimental probability as that ratio. So let's say that we conduct an experiment that we do 200 trials. So 200 would be our denominator, right? So 200 times we're going to spin the spinner. In theory, one-fifth of the 200 times would be any color, or we could say 20% of 200 as well. So one-fifth of 200 is 40 times, or 20% of 200 is 40 times. So we would expect if we spun the spun spinner 200 times, it would land on red 40 times. It would land on yellow 40 times. So in theory, one-fifth of the time on any one of these colors, out of 200, that should happen 40 times. All right, let's conduct our own experiment. We're going to do our own spinner experiment. And we're going to expect that 20% of the time it's yellow, 20% is blue, 20% is purple, 20% is red, and 20% is our turquoise blue. So here's my chart that I'm going to use to gather my experiment data. So you can see that we're going to do this a bunch of times. And I want to show you what happens the more times you conduct the experiment. So there is, I'll link it in the description of this video, there is a called a simulator that spins this for me. So I went to a website and I said spin the spinner for me five times and tell me what's happened so it did it at random. So after five spins, this was my data, 0% of the time it landed on blue, 20% it landed on yellow, 20% on cyan, which is our turquoise blue here, red 20% of the time, and purple 40% of the time. So we know that one out of five is equivalent to 20%, but I wanted to show this to you in percent so that we could see this um, all have a common denominator, right? So percents will be percents. So in theory, we want each of these cells in our table to have been 20% because 20% of the time it should land on each color. So we can see that three in this conducted experiment, three of the times, three of our colors, it worked. 
but it, we didn't get any blue out of our five times. Now let's conduct our experiment 50 times. And once again, I went to a website and I put in spin the spinner 50 times. And this is what the outcome was. When we spun the spinner 50 times, it landed on blue 10%, on yellow 30%, cyan 20%, red 30%, and purple 10%. Again, in theory, our theoretical probability hasn't changed. It should land on each color 20% of the time. After 50 spins, only one of the colors came out exactly at 20%. Then I tried 100. So I put into my simulator, spin this spinner 100 times, and it told me that it landed on blue, or it stopped on blue 20% of the time, yellow 19%, cyan 18%, red 17%, and purple 26%. So these are close, but I did within 1%. So two of our outcomes were very close. But our other two were even closer. So only one was pretty far off after 100 spins. So then I said, well, let's do a few more. So I used the simulator and I said, spin the spinner 500 times. And here's what happened. 18.8% .8 of the time, 22.4% of the time, 18.4, 21, and 19.4. Again, in theory, each of them should have been 20%. So I did a margin of error of about 1%, and it was 2. But you can see, these are darn close. Now we can say these are within 2%. So we're getting even closer. Notice there's not any that are this far off. So then I said, all right, let's do one more and do a thousand spins. So here's my data after a thousand spins. All five of my probabilities were the expected outcome of the theoretical probability all within 1% of our expected theoretical probability. So I was just a little over, a little under, one under, 0.2 over, and 0.8 over. So you can see that the more spins you do, your experimental probability is more likely to match your theoretical probability. So the more trials you carry out, the closer your experimental probability is likely to be to the theoretical probability. So because this is true, we're going to learn about relative frequency. So relative frequency is the number of times a particular outcome occurred divided by the total number of outcomes. Relative frequencies are equal to experimental probabilities. So what this really means is that we have our theoretical probability and we're going to use that in theory, if we conduct an experiment a bunch of times, our theoretical probability would be the expected outcome. So let's do a problem together. Finding relative frequency, and we're going to use our theoretical probability. So here we have a spinner divided into eight equal sections. So it just means it's a fair spinner. Each section's the same. Each section is either pink, yellow, or blue as shown. The arrow on the spinner will be spun 4,800 times. We're going to predict the number of times the arrow will stop on yellow. So again, we want to predict yellow. So there is one section out of eight sections on the spinner that is yellow. So landing on yellow, we have a one in eight chance. Now we want to know if we conducted the experiment 4,800 times, what would be the experimental probability? So we would expect that this, these ratios would be equivalent. So eight multiplied by what is 4,800? That is 600. 8 multiplied by 600 is 4,800. So we would take 1 and multiply it by 600. 1 times 600 is 600. So we would expect that this spinner, if spun 4,800 times, would stop on yellow 600 times out of 4,800. And that is relative frequency using theoretical probability to predict the outcome of an experiment. Now it's your turn. We have a spinner, the same spinner we just did in the last problem together, divided into eight equal sections. Each section is either pink, yellow, or blue, as shown. 
Now the arrow of the spinner will be spun 4,800 times, and you're going to predict the number of times the arrow will stop on blue. So pause the video here, find the relative frequency, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So here we're going to look for predicting in our solution the number of times the arrow will stop on blue after being spun 4,800 times. There are three blue sections out of our eight on our spinner. And we're going to have a relative frequency from an expected outcome of an experiment conducted 4,800 times. We learned before that eight multiplied by 600 is 400, 4,800. So we're going to multiply three by our 600 to maintain equivalent ratios. Three times 600 is 1800. So we can say that the relative frequency of spinning would be 1800 times out of our 4800 times we would expect the spinner to stop on a blue section. And there you have it. That is theoretical and experimental probability. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you have a great day and come back soon.